Oh, this place, the old warehouses, dude. Okay. In the tent. Yeah, this is me in the tent. Where'd you go? This is me. Here. Are you turn? <laughs> no! We were gonna kill the other person! Here we go! And welcome everybody to episode 28 of the 1UP XP show. Now as we run through life, you know, some games just start to fade away. They either go into the sunset or in the hall of fame of games that we just missed. Well, it has been about seven years since I played this game. And well, at six maybe at most. But the thing was, this is the grandfather of Battle Royale modes. This game, H1Z1, now Z1 Royale, was very popular back in 2016 into the beginning of 2017. Everyone played it. Ninja played it. Uh, you had the big names like Dr. Lupo, uh, as well as Dr. Disrespect. Everyone played this game. And it gave way to PUBG, to Fortnite, to all the Battle Royale games you know now. It was pretty, basically spawned from this game. So I decided, I'm going to check out this game again. Is it still alive? Is it still populated? Well, the servers only get about 5 to 15 pre people per time. What used to be 150 lobbies is now 5 to 15, but it's still a great time. Z1 Royale hasn't lost any of its charm when it comes to basic video game battle royale mode. It is, it is just still king of the hill, in my personal opinion. Myself uh, and Clam, we jump in and check it back out, and I can tell you we've had more fun in this game than we've had in a battle royale in a long time. Check it out. Oh, this place, the old warehouses, dude. Oh my God. Why is there so many helmets here? I can't, I can't carry any more helmets. It's fine. All right, let's drop these. This was the building I was in originally. I heard a guy.
He's probably gonna have armor on of some sort. I don't have any throwables. Is it? Oh, it's just me and this guy. Okay. It's right in front of us. What are you going to do, dude? Devastator, I don't know what you're saying. I'm in a ripping. I have no space for a nade. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, there's armor though. Can you not scope in? No, that's the sniper rifle. The only way you can scope in it is a sniper rifle from a loot drop. Ooh. Was it me? Yeah, I see. Maybe it was me. He's right in front of me. It was me. That was me. All right, that's you over there. You want to go get him or what? This is me that you're coming up to him right now. Okay. In the tent. Yeah, this is me in the tent. Where'd you go? This is me. Right here. Did you turn? <laughs> Say it to my face. Play again. Come on. Let's go. Click it. Play again. Load her up. You got to beat it. Shut up. <laughs> ah, such a good time. And just to let you know, what I did not put in the show is Clam ended up beating me something like four kills to two kills throughout the night. He got his revenge, but I had to put that in there because it was the first game we have actually played together in Z1 Royale. When I knew, when I started playing with games with Clam about three years ago, this wasn't a game much anymore. So uh, this was the first time that we played together, and it's a ball. Uh, we've continued to play it here the last few nights, and it is a good time. Z1 Royale uh, is, I believe, on Steam, but also PS4. Um, so it is on the PlayStation Marketplace. Uh, again, don't know how many people are going to be playing it, but you can check it out. It is free, and it is still a great time if you want a basic Battle Royale. Coming up next, we sit down with a former pro, but also a collegiate eSport athlete at the same time. Not to mention having a job, and this kid's life is extremely busy. Z Davis, we sit down and talk to him about his pro career, his collegiate career, his college life, and also just his life in general. Coming up right after the break. And welcome back, everyone, to the 1UP XP show. We sit down with Zach Davis, Z Davis. He was a pro with Lazarus at the time of this recording, uh, but he is now a free agent. He's out there looking for another team, and I can tell you this right now. I don't know if I've ever seen a more determined kid when it comes to pro status, collegiate status, as well as going to college, having a job, and doing everything in life, and having a very short window uh, for any downtime or just off time. This kid is determined. He's out there every day, scrims, pushing everyone else to be better, pushing every other team to be better, and looking for a team. And I know he will find one very shortly. He plays Apex. He's a pro in Apex. He's also a collegiate athlete in Apex at Grand Valley State University. 
and then he has his life and very little time for any downtime or for any sleep or even, you know, just normal things that we all might take a little bit for granted. So we sat down with Zach. We talked to him about his many titles, and we uh, talked to him about what it's like being a pro, a collegiate athlete, a collegiate student, but also uh, what's just normal life like. So here's part one of what Zach had to say about his time uh, with Lazarus, as well as what he's doing in college and also what he's doing in life. But let's start at the beginning. Zach Davis, little kid, enjoying some video games until now, pro athlete. Give us the timeline. How did gaming start for you, and how did you wind up with Lazarus, Apex, and Grand Valley? Uh, so, you know, it's, it just started playing other games, you know, console games, Super Mario 64, you know, into Xbox, Call of Duty, played a lot of Destiny, and then around 2014, I got my first computer. I started playing CSGO with my brother, H1Z1, when that was all popular. Oh, yeah. H1 uh, was yep. so good. H1 was, I still love H1. It's so I good. still love I, H1. I, yeah. That's what got me into computer. Uh, yeah. Actually, it was my first computer game uh, that I really committed to was H1Z1. And that's actually what yeah. got me into the Battle Royale scene. Yeah, that's where, I, that's where I first started was H1Z1. And then, you know, I played a little bit of PUBG, played, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of Fortnite. Yep. Uh, and then Apex just kind of dropped out of the blue. And my buddy, who I still play video games with, who I started playing H1 with, was like, dude, you got to just play this everybody's streaming it there was no announcement <laughs> of this video game ever right everyone just started streaming it it looks like a blast I was like all right whatever let's run it you're going to grand valley for an engineering degree and also playing apex for grand valley's esports team yep and what yep. what what spawned an engineering degree out of nowhere you know back in high school i was in the robotics club i saw a lot with that and yeah. then Grand Valley worked very closely with, you know, the robotics scene. There was a bunch of, you know, tournaments and stuff there that I would go to with my school. And then it was just kind of a quick little segue, just point A to point B. There wasn't really a second option or anything. Right. So just kind of ran with it. So you're going to do four years at Grand Valley for that engineering degree? Or uh, is that what it's you're gonna looking be, at? It's going to be five, yeah. Five. So I'll be done next winter, I believe, next winter or next summer. Got you. Um, so you have a job. You have... Yep you know, your life, you have yep. pro, you have esports, yep. you have college, you have five major things going on. Do you find any like issues yeah. balancing that? Yeah, it's tough to balance. You know, I, I did a bunch of stuff over, over the last semester, just kind of figuring out what I need to do better, where, right. where it's easier to balance. If I need to drop, you know, either like work or figure out something different with school or whatever, you know? And so I'm going to figure that out as I, keep progressing through college, what I need to do to balance a little bit better. Right. But yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a juggling act for sure. Um, but what are the goals for Zach and Z Davis? What, what are your goals overall, um, whether it's school or whether it's pro league, whatever it is. I'd like to just find a consistent job somewhere, whether it's in the engineering field or in esports. Right. Um, if I can keep doing this, this is probably, you know, the thing I want to do the most is just keep playing or find somewhere in the field of esports, something I can keep doing. If the option presents itself to stay in esports, what do you think you'd want to do uh, other than yeah. be a pro, obviously? Yeah, I think <clears throat> I'd like to stay around in esports as much as possible. You know, I think I could provide a lot of things, whether it be on the business side of things. Right. Or, if, you know, coaching, whatever, playing. I'll still play. I don't I'll play as long as I can. Right. You know, um, but, you know, I'll just do whatever. I'd like to stay in the esports field as long as possible. Um, and I said we'd hit on at the beginning of the show is should pros be able to play in the collegiate scene? Um, with your pro status and also being on a college team, uh, what is your take on it? Do you see something wrong with it? Do you see something good with it? You know, from where I'm sitting, I don't see an issue with it because I, you know. You're on both sides of it, yeah. I'm on both sides. <laughs> um, but I understand where people would be coming from, right? You know, you don't see, you know, anyone coming back from the NBA to play college. Right. You don't see anyone from the NFL coming back to play college, you know, for another year or whatever. I mean, Jared Smith's playing golf, but that's, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. Right. Um, but I can understand, you know, people trying to enter the scene via a collegiate route, um, not wanting to get hosed by just pros who are also doing college. Right. Um, so I see that part, you know, I don't think it should really matter because you're going to see pros wherever you go in any tournament. It's not like they're separated by any means. What is, I should say, or what is the biggest challenge for you uh, right now being pro <clears throat> slash collegiate athlete? What do you see as the biggest problem or biggest challenge? Just time. Time's yeah. the worst thing. Like, it is, it's dude. always going to be time. <laughs> it's always you time. Know? 
uh, between homework, doing homework, doing, you know, preparing for tests, preparing for, you know, anything on esports tournaments, scrims, whatever. Most of the time yeah. I'm, I'm in bed by 2 a.m. and then I'm waking <laughs> up at 6 a.m. And my huge thank you to Zach and uh, Z Davis, if you will, for sitting down and taking time out and talking with me. His road is going to be rocky with time as we talked, but it is going to be very fruitful. He has a lot of things on his plate, but I think it's the right things on his plate. And uh, he will know what to do when the time presents itself. Plus, he'll have many doors to choose from. But coming up next, we had a big week in launches. We actually have some big games, some big DLCs that came out this week. So we're putting Coach's Roundtable on hold for next week, segment three of that. And we're going to talk about some of the things that dropped this week. And it's pretty big for some of these long-running titles. We'll have that right after the break. And welcome back, everyone. It has been an exciting start to February, and even through the middle of February, it's been really crazy with game releases. We have some big titles and some amazing games that have come out so far in February, and we're going to take a look at some of that. First of all, some of the big news was Destiny, Bungie, the company that originally started making Halo, they make Destiny now. Now, Destiny 2 has been out for five years, but they just made a huge deal with Sony. Sony bought Bungie, which means we might be saying goodbye to Destiny on the Game Pass, uh, which is on Xbox, because they had a deal with Xbox. Now, with Sony buying them, there hasn't been anything super different just yet, but it looks like I might be diving back into Destiny, which, next to Fortnite, I probably have the most hours in that game over the last eight years. Destiny 2 The Witch Queen came out earlier this week and people are out there grinding it doing the story getting their light back up and also getting ready for that all-important raid which is always fun to watch and do uh, if you've ever played destiny you know that getting six people together going into a raid there's not much like it and destiny is a shooter looter uh kind of a small not really an mmo but they call it kind of an mmo but it is a great game if you love shooter looters and you love a great story Destiny 2 is for you. You can play it without this DLC if you want for free if you have Xbox Live Game Pass. Um, but also, if you want this DLC, it's going to run you anywhere from $40 to $100. Elden Ring. I am not a Souls game guy. I'm not Dark Souls. I have never played these games. But when IGN and all of these reviews are giving it 10 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10, the best game since Breath of the Wild, your ears perk up a little bit. So I might be diving into Elden Ring. Now, this is supposed to be a huge anticipated title um, that is just an open world MMORPG that from the mind of George R.R. Martin, I, I don't know what to expect from it. So we might be jumping into this and playing this and seeing what it's all about. Again, I am not a huge Dark Souls guy, but if you've played the Souls games and you love this type of genre, this game just might be the game for you. Lost Ark came out, and it seems like a lot of people around the gaming community are enjoying that. That is a point-to-click um, type game. That is not for me. I am not a point-to-click guy. I have never been all about the Diablo games, or uh, even I even had trouble with Minecraft Dungeons. But I will tell you this: if you can get around the point to click or click and point and move that way. Um, the games are pretty stellar. Now, I will say a lot of people have been enjoying Lost Ark. I myself have not jumped into it yet. Maybe I will make, take the plunge, but my eyes are kind of set right now on the Elden Ring, but also Destiny 2. Um, that, that DLC might be the best DLC to come out for Destiny in a long time, if not the best since Destiny's launched way back in 2014. So we, um, we might be giving those a shot. But there are some of the updated titles for you. February's been busy, and March is probably only going to be busier. We have one more segment left here in the 1UP XP show. We'll be right back after the break. And that does it for episode 28 of the 1UP XP show. Thank you for joining me, and hopefully we can see you in a few games here. Don't forget, we're on YouTube, 9 and 10 News. Subscribe, hit the like. All the episodes are on there. All the podcasts are on there. Live streams Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Be good, stay safe, take care. I'll see you guys next week. Here we go!